KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Get off my lawn. and Eric Celeste back with uh, Get Off My Lawn, Police Withdraw From My Lawn. Uh, what? This is, this is a show uh, where uh, Eric, who's a columnist for D Magazine, and I, I'm a columnist for the Dallas Observer, we, we talk about stuff uh, going on in the city. What just happened, Eric? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> not much. I came back from a beautiful week in Santa Fe, and, mm. and not much uh, happening. Very little going on in the uh, school district, right? Or did I miss something? You people, you go up there to Santa Fe, and you have meetings, right? You just I looked for I looked for old business people from <laughs> Dallas who have hot sports opinions about. Dallas Independent School District. Yeah. I couldn't find him. I found a lot of mineral <laughs> springs and hippies and great food, but well, I couldn't find him. You're the wrong generation. We were up there several years ago, and we ran into some old Dallas people. We tend to. <laughs> and it was a couple. And uh, she started saying something about something going on back in Dallas, and her husband steps between her and us and says, we do not discuss Dallas when we're in Santa Fe. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, we had that too. No phones, no yeah. communication. It, it was great. But no, I came back to all hell breaking loose and you in the middle of it, Jim. You know what? It's great. It's all about me. It is about you. <laughs> You've thought that forever. And yeah. now yeah. somebody was paid a hundred grand to prove it. Yeah. And, and what we're talking about is the Coggins investigate the Paul Coggins external investigation to Mike Miles, the school superintendent. The school superintendent was accused of uh, fiddling with a contract and bullying uh, a top female staffer. Bullying being a term that kind of carries with it a suggestion of he punched her out or something. Yeah, it's it's a loaded term. And and so Paul Coggins, former U.S. attorney, uh, was uh, now a private attorney, was hired. Uh, at a cost of a hundred grand to investigate these charges, he came back with a report saying, "No bullying." The lady who said she was bullied said she wasn't bullied, and no fiddling with the contract. Nothing illegal or uh, nothing illegal, either civil or criminal. So it would have made, if you stop there, it would have made the people on the school board who paid a hundred grand for this look kind of stupid, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. I think so. <laughs> you know, thank you for telling us that everything the guy we hired and trusted told us was correct. But yeah. we're glad we paid you a hundred grand to confirm that. That's what it would have looked like. So I would argue that Coggins, being a smart guy, a good lawyer, threw his client a little bone, uh, a, a cover story, so they wouldn't look totally stupid. And he said, but. Maybe Mike Miles, the superintendent, engaged in a conspiracy to have this guy who was quitting. There was a top guy, Kevin Smilker, who was leaving the school district. And this is how this conspiracy would work. Kevin Smilker is a top staffer for Mike Miles, the superintendent. He quit. And according to the conspiracy theory, he quit because he hated Miles. Right. But Miles went to him and said, look, would you mind... If I wrote a fake resignation letter for you saying that you love me and you hate the trustees, and according to the conspiracy theory, the guy said, oh, okay. <laughs> Not just that. From what I've been told, um, 
it's it's even more absurd than that. You know right. that like the like the the idea is that Smelker came in and said, "Look, I'm going to give you guys at least two years I'm, in this right. in this job," right. and that some school board members whose names rhyme with Elizabeth Bones <laughs> um, said. Say, now, now say no. I'm pretty sure he only said one year. Him leaving is not a big deal. It's it's all it's all above board, and he loves me and loves us. This is not just a conspiracy. This is a conspiracy that Mike Miles was able to pull off because of his Soviet era military training. That's right. That's right. That he has he has Cold figured War. out Cold, Cold War. War training. Yeah. He knows how to run these prob the like. Uh, campaigns where we say no 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 don't look here look over here and tar and feather us in the process so Smelker is about to quit and he's about to according to this theory about to tell everybody I can't stand this Mike Miles guy I, I love those trustees but I'm gonna quit and Mike Miles goes in and says Kevin and he shows him the ace of spades. <laughs> we have ways of making this work for right. me. And Smelker says Yes, sir, you are right. I love you. <laughs> right. I hate the trustees. <laughs> write a letter for me. So so they write this letter. But then the plan begins to fall apart because he's writing the letter and he goes, Oh no. I'm not I can't I, spell I can't spell. Yeah. Right. I've got problems here. I've got I'm missing the K I on my type. I can't write a letter. I can't write a letter. I now I need Outside forces. I need a spy. I Not need Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> right. I need this. I need this person to help me. Yeah. Uh, take down the board. Right. And, and, and so they bring in Lisa Lemaster. <laughs> well, if that's what her real name is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She says Lisa Lemaster, <laughs> who's a, a media relations consultant who's only been around town for about thirty years. I don't want to put any age on anybody, but Lisa's a former reporter. She's been here forever. Everybody knows her. Everyone knows. Her. She's worked with everyone. And she wants. She kind of probably wants to get along with uh, Miles and everybody because she is going to bid for a job with the district later. So she's got relations. She's kind of schmoozing these people. This is I did this for a while. This is how you get work. Someone I, says, can you help me? And you go, heck yeah. And I've done it too. The job where you, you, you've got this guy who's a vice president of some big corporation. And he says... I want to write a letter uh, calling this lady out there who works for the other company a prostitute. <laughs> right. Write it up for me. Right. And, and I'll pay you a lot of money. And when you, most of your life, when you go to a big news corporation and you and they go, hey, we really like what you do. Can we pay you a third of right. what you think you're yeah. worth? Yeah. When someone comes along and says, hey, can you just help me write a letter? Yeah. Then you might do it. But, but anyway, you, that's But you that's have a bad theory. job because you have to say, uh, sir, I, I, I'm calling our prostitute is what they call libel. <laughs> and so you don't want to do that. And you have to talk him down. Right. Or what looks like happened in this case you go why aren't you just coming out and saying what it is you mean let me let me take a draft yeah. of this where you where we name names and we we actually put the public heat on these people but this is what it's going to look like if but you this do. is what it'll look like if you do and and can you live with it so anyway lisa little master is uh on as a favor it's the kind of favor you and i because we've done this work hate where somebody calls up and says hey why, why don't you do something for me for free Right. <laughs> no, but you got to do it to get the business later. Right. So she looks at the letter, and it's emailed around, and these drafts of it that nobody's going to publish. And then the letter, and here's where we get to moi, my <laughs> role. Right. Supposedly. The handsome, young, yeah, American. Yeah, useful appearing. The, right, the, the American who's clearly converted in Detroit to communism. Right, yeah. The former Detroit resident. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, supposedly, Miles says, no, we will give it to Chutsi. <laughs> <laughs> and they call you, and you, you're just alone in your bed. There's yeah. liquor bottles, empty liquor <laughs> bottles around. You yeah. grab the phone. Yeah. Right. And, and they say, publish this letter, and I do it. What this leaves out is that this story about the guy leaving and why he was really leaving was already out there because why? 
because I had oh, a, you. no you right. It's all about you. It is about me. <laughs> it's about the even younger, more <laughs> handsome <laughs> ingenue. Maybe, but <laughs> if you're into that stuff, <laughs> so right. I uh, and and so I had put up on Culture Map, which was a place where I would go and look at the news of the day and try to bring um, uh, tell you what the stories were of the day and bring my own uh, columnar. Tape, yeah. tape to it and I had been talking to folks in the district about um, the problems with the trustees and that right. had been on my mind for a while right. and um, I had been told a lot of things by people who feared retribution if it ever came out that can you, can you name them for us <laughs> well, that's, see, <laughs> right and that's that's the great thing is well why would you why wouldn't you name them well because they will be fired they will be fired <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they have families, and they trusted me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's what happened. So I said, Elizabeth Jones is part of the problem. Well, guess what Elizabeth Jones did, by the way? Starts calling, marching down, whatever, when whatever form, starts going around DISD trying to figure out, who was it who said that to yeah, him? Absolutely. I'm not that way. Uh, so and I it, want the names right and now. And I want the names. Yeah. So guess guess what? There would have been retribution. Oh. So um, so I said it, and and um, so you followed up on that because you're Chased a better it. reporter than no, I am. No, I'll, I'll throw out a I'll throw out a theory, and you went to prove it for me. I chased it. Yeah, and so you. Well, that's and, a, and so, that's and, a, a news business term for I tried to catch up. And so you went and started making calls, trying to figure out are some of these top executives, um, and and. You know, and, and it's not like we were in cahoots. I don't think we had talked in months until the day you asked me to do this show. Right. So it's not like it's not like we go to the place where yeah. all journalists go at night and compare notes. Santa Fe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, and and so you started making your calls to figure out is this true? Are people fed up with not just the board members we know are nuts, but some of the ones we don't know? And saying, by the way, if uh, you know that smoker guy who's leaving as this story moves forward, I sure would like to talk to him. I don't seem to be able to get through to him because that's how you reach somebody like this. You call him he doesn't take the call right from jim shoots <laughs> tell him no i've never heard of that guy i don't know why he's calling here uh, uh but you have to go around and you tell other people man i'd like to talk to that guy i really feel like he's got a story to tell and blah blah yeah. blah so then i'm driving down the road one day and on my cell phone rings and it's this guy kevin smoker i understand you want to talk to me very dicey at first I don't know what you want to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to talk to you at all unless we talk off the record and get to know each other a little bit. We do that, and finally he says, okay, here's what I can tell you on the record. And he tells me he's quitting, that he is an absolute supporter in and believer of Mike Miles, that he's quitting because of the trustees, that things have gotten so bad that he'd gotten to a point where he thought it was foolish for him to appear before the school board. When they call him up to the mic, you know, in the school board meetings, staff member, would you come up here and explain this? He said, I really thought it was foolish for me to appear before the school board without a criminal attorney at my side. And obviously, this guy works for Mike Miles. He can't go to his boss and say, boss, uh, I want to help you out at the school board meeting, but i got to bring a criminal lawyer along. Right. <laughs> so that ain't going to work. Right. That, 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 that might have made the papers. <laughs> the yeah, yeah. So he's got, he's got to, and he wants the criminal lawyer because he says that uh, school board members, and he names them, uh, one was Lou Blackburn. He said, if you go look at this meeting, you will see Blackburn broadly suggest that another staff member is engaged in fraud and perjury. And this all goes out on the, it's all um, uh, recorded forever on the internet. And so next time this staff member is Googled for his next job, ooh, up pops this meeting in Dallas where the school board. He sues, and, and because he didn't defend him, suddenly Smelker is involved in that case. Yeah, and so uh, anyway, Smelker said, that's why I'm quitting. So I wrote this piece, and here's where I get into the embarrassing part it's all about when did i get that letter because miles is is accused of uh, le leaking it to me yes which did not happen i did not get it from miles now my wife has instructed me that i must not ever admit publicly the truth about this <laughs> because it's the one Cause thing because it's, it's that embarrassing to yeah. her uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she says it should be to me and it kind of is 
I don't exactly remember. I swear, the letter wasn't important. I'd already talked to uh, Smelker. Right. You didn't need it. Yeah, I didn't need the letter. I wasn't writing about the letter. I was writing about Smelker. Stuff appears on my desk at the Observer. It appears in brown envelopes. That's how somebody gets you something with no trail. I used to work there. I remember. <laughs> right. I did call John DeLander, the PR guy at one point, and said, DeLander, I've talked to Kevin Smelker, and I'm looking at this letter. Uh, he says this is his resignation letter. This is what it says. Can you confirm to me that this is a, do a document? And it became a public document because it was emailed to Miles. Right. Now, I think that could have been deliberate to make it public. Sure. Sure. And so why would somebody want to make it public? Uh, I, well, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, I, you know, if you feel like... It, does Smelker want to really make it public but doesn't want... But does Lisa want to make it public because she feels like there needs to be heat on there? I don't they don't want to hand it out. Yeah. Now, by the way, the, you getting that in the brown envelope just proves the theory that this is all Soviet era yeah. clandestine. <laughs> I mean, if you, I'm sure there's video of Mike Miles jimming the lock <laughs> at the Observer <laughs> and getting in there and yeah. putting that envelope on right. there. It's very Jason Bourne. Did somebody come in here, an old lady this morning who looked kind of like Mike Miles. <laughs> uh, but but it all what it really shows is that people are scared to death of getting fired for yes. touching this stuff. And, and uh, rightly so. Is it hu humanly possible that you have this narrative going on in the morning news and on Channel 8 for months, Mike Miles can't hold on to his staff. There they go. They're running off. And the trustees, the truth is, the trustees are running them off. Yes. And then they're saying, look, they ran off. Is it humanly possible that Miles would have wanted the truth to be told about, well, known about of this? Of course. But, but he can't do it because yeah. you're in a weird position. I mean, you've got these folks are technically your boss. They're elected officials. Um, but you're coming in. You are the focal point. You're the one, you're the one where the buck stops. Right. You've got to turn this district around, um, and you know, I, I think it, I think you're in a really tough place. I well, mean, that gets to something I want to talk about later, which is the whole board and that structure. But is this humanly possible that Kevin Smelker says, "Look, boss, I'm leaving. I'm sick of this place. I'm out of here." And it's the trustees, and I'm telling the truth. And Miles says, "Oh, wait a minute, buddy." We, uh, you can't do that in a way that makes it look like it's me. Right. And so you talk to Lisa, and uh, I, I'm not going to write anything. I'm not going to take part in this. I'm not going to tell you you can't do it, but we got to be careful you don't do this the wrong way. Sure, and I, and I believe you sit there and tell yourself, if you're Mike Miles, there's a way to do this where I don't get too involved right. but that the, the information that needs to come out comes out now yeah. and that's a problem because it never usually works that way and if the letter is true if it's telling the truth which is what's important here what's wrong with telling the truth okay we'll come back after this break Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Get off my lawn. Eric Celeste, back with... Jim shoots, and we're going to go to the phones. Now we're talking DISD, Mike Miles, and the school board. 
Uh, Tony is on the line. Our regular caller, Tony. Tony, are you there? Yes. <laughs> How y'all doing this morning? Doing well. How you doing? All right. Uh, it, it, it seems though. I mean, because every day, like you know, you had Brandon not all as as a council person. Then you had uh, Mrs. Jones, and now you're saying Luke Blackburn. Has anyone of you have ever asked those people to come on your show? I mean, because you know, just as well as you know, the accusations are being pushed by Mike. I mean, that they're pushing the accusations by Mike Miles. Have you all actually asked these people to uh, uh, interview these people? I've talked to school board members all off the record, and so I can't tell you which ones I've talked to. I will say, because I've said it, I've not talked to Elizabeth Jones. Um, the, we, In the way Jim talked about, I've gone through some back channels to attempt to, um, and that fell apart, to put it that way. It's hard to, again, it's hard to talk about um, because you end up going through other people to try to get to them. And I but, think Tony, but I think Jim has. Tony was asking if we've ever asked them to be on the show. Yeah, and I I have not. No, um, that's I, a good I, point. It is a good point. And the reason why I ask this question is this. It's, getting, it's like President Obama's silly season. It, you know, at the end of the day, and, and I think when you said this a couple of months, about a month ago, my mother's got to deal with the school board. The school board has to deal with him. With him. It needs to be a come to Jesus meeting at the end of the day. And it seems as though that everybody don't like him, like each other, and Mike Miles is almost becoming a detriment to the district and the school board. And at some point, you got to give it all of it, throw so all in trash with the school board and Mike Miles. Because at this point, if you have a stalemate, you're gonna go another whole two or three years with this situation. And I think they, after today, need to come out publicly, not necessarily support him. And say, hey, this is what we expect. He need to come out and say, hey, you know what? I didn't make mistakes. Be a be, be a man. I made mistakes. I I thought I I thought I could control, you know, a school district of 150,000 kids, you know, and do it my way. But I need the school board just where they need me. And I'll leave y'all with that. Tell me, thanks. Tell me, that's a great point. Um, you know, I, I we've said it. I I think I don't know what's going to happen today. I feel like it's a four four split and and i don't know you know but if that's going to end up being what happens um and the school the school board's meeting to consider this coggins report but they're really meeting whether or not to fire miles right and so you know i i two things about that one i think i think you have to break them apart there's the school board problem and there's the current problem mike miles finds himself in and the fact that he's ineffective because of what is what has gone on which is you're exactly right at least in this political environment um, not ineffective in terms of the data, which support him that he's doing yeah. the right thing. District's doing good. Just in terms of political uh, support. So um, I was telling someone this yesterday who's involved in all this. You know, the funny thing about this is what, what's what been going on is put me in this position, and I think probably, Jim, you may feel the same way, where I'm vocally in support of someone who I don't even know is that good of a superintendent. <laughs> For all I know, he's just okay, yeah. and not even that great, or maybe a little below par. I don't know yet. We don't know yet. But I'm in support of finding out, because the ramifications of not finding out are great. And then you've got the school board, which, yes, I think it needs an entirely new structure. I think it is not necessarily the people in it, although it is the people in it, that getting rid of those people isn't going to help, that it's a that is uh, as it's currently structured as elected officials you're going to continue to have these problems of meddling and running your fiefdoms and running off good people uh tony used the the word silly season uh it, this has been so crazy in the last week i had a very painful uh conversation falling out with a guy who's been a dear friend for years he wanted to talk about the letter the whole letter thing so i thought we were talking about that but i said Look, the, the issue here is that the district has done a dismal job of educating many, many, many of its students. It's got multiple high schools where less than 1% of the seniors are college ready. And I said, what, what is your idea about that? What do you, to this guy I'm talking to, what do you want to do about that? And he said, that's a trick question. I want to talk about the letter. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and <laughs> So this was what morning news employee? <laughs> well, <laughs> it wasn't a morning news person, but, but 
we're talking about this stuff and yet th there is this I know everybody says it's about the kids, but it is about the kids. But it's funny, I make fun of people who say that all the time, yeah. right? And there's a there's a great Simpsons bit about won't won't somebody please think about the children? The, you know, <laughs> the yelling every time something bad happens, right. and, which I get it, and it's funny, and right. because it's absurd, because right. you get people using that that defense shield and that cloak of right. invisibility when it suits them, yeah. but it. In this case, it really, it, it's actually the exception that proves the rule. It really is about, are there, you know, it's all about data. You know, yeah. you can, you, the, we get caught up real easily, right, in these anecdotal stories from school to school. This president is beloved and she's getting right. run out. This uh, this t longtime teacher who has done great work and which is inarguable, is, it thinks that, that this entire regime needs to go right. and that everything's going to hell in a handbasket you c these pockets of excellence need to be recognized and expanded on and yeah. all of that but you can't ignore the data from the system as a whole this is terrible a and yet getting better with the reform the reforms that miles is putting in it has so far shown good results right uh, overall well my wife and i were talking about this last night and and i wonder if there are sort of two things happening in the background one is very ethnic one is the fact that uh kindergarten through third grade 80 percent of the kids are now hispanic k through three 80 percent are hispanic <clears throat> the the power and glory in the district for 30 years has been African-American in terms of who, who's in the driver's seat right. and, and the staff. So there's a great tension between the Hispanic community and the black community. And the LULAC uh, uh, of North Texas just came out solidly in favor of Miles. Right. Don't fire Miles. Miles is our dude. And so you have a power struggle between these two communities, uh, brown and black. Then you, you mentioned the pockets of excellence, and there's this, there are a lot of very unhappy uh, white teachers in good schools. Yes. And, and they're saying, uh, I know how to teach. I, I, I'm a, I, I've got a master's degree, a PhD. I've got good results. And I got these little Nazis coming in here from headquarters telling me that I have to teach uh, this, this very formulaic way, and it's an insult to my abilities. This is what my wife and I were talking about. We had a kid in DISD, and there is a certain syndrome by which if you're going to mete out discipline on the black kids and the Hispanic kids, you got to find a couple white kids in the crowd, in the, di in the dining room, in the, right. in the, uh, the cafeteria, and let them have it too. Because you can't just do the kids of color. Right. And so... The, the uh, you know, that's why we always would tell our son, he would come home sometimes and say, some of the things that happen there aren't fair, and we'd say, yes, absolutely, they're not fair, so stay away from them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And they're going to continue to happen yeah, right. because that's the politics yeah, of the situation. Yeah, that's how it so. is. Uh, that drives, I, I mean, unfair is unfair. It also drives some white people insane. Well, but the concept of fair uh, in, right. <laughs> in, you know, middle upper middle class upper yeah. class uh, world is the, is the sort of stick that everybody wants to beat you with it, that is just not fair yeah, and you, you always have the feeling that okay you're not you don't really want fair do you you want extra fair <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> fair plus <laughs> fair plus fair plus consider look, yeah. at, look at my whiteness yeah, or look at right. my money it, uh, it, one or the other it does look at my green it is a crazy thing about us white folks, but yeah. there's this belief that we get a little extra fair. Because right. look right. at us, we're fair. <laughs> or that at least let us be in on defining fair. Yeah. Yeah. And let us not be included in this big thing that has to do with black and brown kids. Right. And so, Jim, you, you look at that, and it's such a large, massive problem. Right. Do you think, like I do, that, it, that you, that do, I now have come to believe... Uh, and I maybe sort of felt this all along, but now it's coming to relief right. that we can't really start until we change the school board structure, uh, fixing that problem. Like, yes. Uh, 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 let me say, first of all, yes. Now, let me ask, are you proposing anything of, like, physical violence? Or <laughs> <laughs> what is your well, idea here? I'm a peaceful young man. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 we spies. We just poke <laughs> people in, yeah. the, in the back of the leg with a poison-tipped umbrella. <laughs> right. 
Um, n- no, I, I, I mean, I just think that other things need to be considered. There are a lot of great, big, you know, we, you can't go look at what happens in in Colorado Springs, for example, right, right. and necessarily translate that, as we've seen, and that's another issue, and it's part of the problem that yeah. Miles had his first year. Yeah. Um, but there are other big districts that are not elected school board members that are appointed by the mayor that um, where you have some because what happens is you get these people elected in tiny tiny uh, election elections where the electorate is a tiny percentage uh, even smaller than in mayoral elections yeah and so it just a few votes swing it and you get these pe- these sort of people who want to be school board members in this unpaid highly uh, you know small base of people who they're responsible for um, you you get a high percentage of them who come in and believe that they need to run things in their district, that they need to go in and tell folks what to do, that they need to be up on all the minutia of, of what's happening, and it's a and, and by the way that's a that's an intoxicating drug to be able to do all that then get in front anytime you're angry get in front of a camera yeah. and and yelp about it on channel eight and and bring in the next person who has to take who has to do all the actual work i i hear people criticize uh, board members and say well they have no business experience a lot of people in the school board have no board experience right before. it's a it's a very different world um the the and i was talking actually to a board member once recently and this person last night <laughs> okay <laughs> where were you <laughs> um and this person was saying you know it's 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 really difficult to understand and he said you know, this this person said you know boards need training just like mm-hmm. everybody else right what is the right amount of oversight how do we set direction without meddling mm-hmm. how do you you know when a, when a big corporation brings it goes on an executive search there's a reason that they go through a process Mm -hmm. uh to you know and and um the the figuring out how to hire the not only the best superintendent but the one with whom we can work with and so you got okay you have board members who who some of them uh run in in sort of legitimate elections where they have to go out and campaign some of them come from nowhere right and uh, I, I met a guy once who was a lawyer who built up a special practice of defending. No, his practice was negotiating severance for school superintendents around the country who are about to get fired. Talk about a specialty, but right. that's what he did. And he did this study of uh, why people run for a school board election all over America. The most common reason he found was that the, that person's kid had gotten in trouble in school. And they were mad at the district. Right. <laughs> and so, well, well, and you've got to have, let's talk about business again and the what structure's there. You know, you've got to have a system where the you feel like if you're, especially if you're going to go in and make dramatic change, the people who are above you have your back. Right. And you've, and, and won't waver. That happens in the real corporate world. And, and you see it because whether they like you or not they understand the importance of supporting authority because they're in that same position you know they have to answer to the same people the the school board's not answering to the same people that mike miles is so what what happens is in the in the corporate world somebody complains you get a, you get employees who are angry and they get ticked off and they go around to this to the what would be the you know the, they go around to other executives right. or executives over the executive who's on top of them and they, end say, run. And they do an end run and this person doesn't know what he's doing. This person doesn't listen. This person is destroying morale. Right. Well, let me tell you what happens in the real world. Those top executives get a blank face as they're listening to right. you. <laughs> they don't move. They just they sit there. And when you're done, they say, thank you for that information. And then they leave. And then you used to go, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have said yeah, all those right. things. Because they protect their own. Now, that yeah. can drive you crazy. Right. But it keeps stability at the top. Right. And it allows for systemic change that is needed here. Yeah. You can't have that. Because you're going to infuriate lots of pockets of people. We've already detailed how that works. From parents to to uh, teachers to uh, uh, principals to uh, uh, you know uh, other interested parties. Right. So... You've got to have that support, and if and if they don't find someone that they'll give it to, 
or that they're set up where they'll never be able to, as a majority, give it to one person. Right. That's a problem. And, and a sort of dirty little secret of reporting is that you get the best, if you're going to cultivate relationships with school board members and you're looking for good, sexy stories from the school district, you get the best stuff from the trustees who have the least understanding of their role. Sure. The ones who <laughs> think they're bloggers. Yeah, right. And and the ones I shouldn't be I should I shouldn't be I shouldn't try to not name names. Carla, you know, mm-hmm. Ranger, folks like that who who, you know, are great stories. They're yeah. great stories. And and okay, if we're gonna name names <laughs> The parrots, whom I love, they're great. Lois, Lois and is Bruce great. Par- Bruce Parrot. I don't uh, know Bruce. No, no. Other than seeing him talk crazy on TV. Yeah, that's all I know him. No idea of what the job of a trustee is, and they're and they're great. They're moles for right. reporters. You can sure. Say, would you mind uh, kind of going into the files and getting me some stuff on such and such? No sweat. Uh, uh, you know, Bruce Parrot was on with Brett Ship. What a week, two weeks yeah. ago before I left town. Right. Uh, and Brett Ship had an exclusive. Yeah. Former board member says Miles should go. Yeah. And I was like, oh, first of all, former. I, I can go find former members who say leave him alone. Yeah. It's easy to do. Go yeah. f- go prove your point by right. finding the former board member yeah. who. But you went and found Bruce Parrott. Now I don't know Bruce Parrott, but I do know that he got a job because he had the name of a of his wife who had yeah. a long sta- who was a, a longtime school board member yeah. who I thought was pretty good, and. And by objective measures, you know, I looked at some of those. They have those groups now that go and do the interviews and do your your scores. Uh-huh. You know, by objective measures against uh, the person who replaced him, Dan, the name I can never last pronounce. Yeah. Um, you know, was terrible. Got terrible marks as a school board member. Bruce yeah. did. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and so you've got to give people this context. T- really bad former school board member. <laughs> who had one term yeah. and was immediately voted out yeah. says Mike Miles should go. Yeah. Other school board members says he was abducted by aliens. <laughs> right. So what? <laughs> right. Uh, wh- well, when we come back, uh, I I would really Eric like to hear about what thoughts you may have about what the alternatives are, because uh, yeah, this issue with the school board just cranks around and around and around over decades yeah and 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 it it becomes this huge albatross that the city's trying to carry Uh, that affects it in many many ways and the danger is if you have a thing if you have a thing that can't be fixed let's say you've got a structure here that just ain't going to work it can't be fixed well, that's a structure that costs us one, it spends $1.7 billion a year, and it's doing tremendous harm in terms of the outcome of the children who are going through it. So if it, the fact that it can't be fixed doesn't mean it gets to just sit there. No. And by the way, it, there are ways to fix it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well... I'm I'm ex- I'm going home now. <laughs> no. no, we'll be back. We'll be back in a minute. If it's time to get rid of your old gas guzzler, the KNON Vehicle Donation Program can help. There's still a market for those old vehicles, and if you donate it, you're helping to support quality programming here on KNON. Just call 877-KNON-AUTO or go online to KNON.org. We'll take care of everything from pickup to tax paperwork. That's 877-KNON-AUTO or online at KNON.org. It's a Radio Sweet 16. This is Louisiana Red, and I'm celebrating my 16th anniversary on KNON Saturday, September the 21st at the Sons of Herman Hall with my good friend T.J. Hooker Teller, son of Dallas Blues legend Johnny Teller, Lou Jimmy and the Feedback Band, and James Butler. We are going to have a free fried chicken dinner from Henderson's Chicken. Doors will open at 7 p.m. Music at 8 p.m. on Saturday, September the 21st. Tickets are at KNON. 
www.hermanhearsonband.org. Bills Records in Dallas. Are forever young records in Grand Prairie. The Sons of Herman Hall is located at 3414 AM Street in Dallas. That's TJ Hooker, Little Jimmy, and the Feedback Band, James Butler, and a free chicken dinner Saturday, September the 21st at the Sons of Herman Hall. This is a K-N-O-N benefit sponsored by Beneficial Consultant Services. Get off my lawn. Hey, babes. <laughs> I take one now. Jim Schutz and Eric Celeste back with Get Off My Lawn. We've been talking about DISD, Mike Miles. As we speak, the school board is meeting to decide whether or not to sack the current superintendent of schools. Eric and I have been talking about uh, the sc structure of the school board and, and the structure of the district. And what else, what can you, if, if we agree that this is a, pretty dysfunctional structure. The best we can hope for out of that meeting, there are like 12 protesters out in front of the building when I came in, and so they're meeting, deciding what to do. The big victory is a 4-4 stalemate, not to fire M Miles. It takes five votes to right. sack him. That's the best we can hope for. Right. <laughs> right. We almost fired you. That's yeah. the best we can hope yeah. for. So what are the alternatives to this set up well and because i believe that you have people invested now personally in making miles go uh on the school board who think that you know that's what that's just what they're going to do they're so it's one way or the other one way or the other today's vote doesn't end that right there will right. be looking for asking for things that will for the next soviet style uh uh, disinformation campaign and I don't I don't want to detour us I want to get back to this but just as an example of that you got people in the media who are who are determined to do that uh, because of ego I guess uh, Brett Ship promised for weeks that miles was going to the pen right and so <laughs> the report comes back miles didn't do nothing right so does Brett say oh mea culpa got to eat some crow on that one I got it wrong no he doubles down but he goes after Lisa LeMaster. Yeah. How do you feature that? How is she, what is she guilty of? I, 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 I don't know. From the picture, a bad haircut? I mean, <laughs> but the, the, other than that, I, I, nothing that I can see. Yeah, she, she was this, this per peripheral person who helped edit a letter for free. And, and yet, man, this is, you know, her name is her business. And again, I'm sitting here, uh, this is the insane thing. Uh, let's, let's just be honest here, okay? I'm defending Lisa, who I, I know through some professional work, who, by the way, the last time I worked with her, quote-unquote, professionally, she came in and did some uh, media training with Craig Watkins when I was running his, right. his media campaign, uh, portion of the campaign, and basically told him to not do anything Eric has told you to do. So, so I disagree with her fundamentally and on a lot of the ways we do our job, and yet I can't believe what's happening. When I've had to talk to her over this letter stuff i've been very grateful that she hasn't brought up any of the really bad stuff i wrote about her years ago over political campaigns <laughs> right <laughs> and so it is in this odd position where i thought when i came back to town to you know now over a year ago that mike miles was kind of bumbling and and doing horrible things uh just stupid things i guess i should say and was probably going to get run out of town mm -hmm. and now i'm in this position where i think he's figured it out I'm defending him so much so it would seem like I'm, I'm a relative, but yeah. I'm only doing it because the other side is bananas with the stuff that's being alleged. So that's going to continue, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the the things that they can pin on Miles are going to get, uh, uh, you know, are going to get scrutinized in the worst possible, harshest light. Right, right. Because so, they're looking for ammo. Because they're looking for ammo. Um, now, you know, you could do what other cities do. And you could change the structure of the board to where it's not elected, to where it's appointed by the mayor. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, in those cities, it has the same problems that, that boards that are appointed have when you elect a mayor who, like a, um, uh, 
big hands with Tom Leppard. Yeah. When you get a mayor who uses that authority in a way to punish his enemies right. and reward his yeah. uh, the folks he's he's on board with. But at least then you've got one person who you can vote out who who does things right. you like or don't like, and it, it it and it takes away the power of that board to be independent. Um, crazy zones right no fly zones for for logic right um a, and makes it more of a cohesive unit that is then where we can focus whether it's doing a good job or a bad job uh, on the mayor also it it means you've then got if you have a mayor that is supportive okay mike miles in this case has to convince the mayor i'm doing a good job the right. mayor understands backing people up until the end until you prove yeah. you can't do it giving you the backing political backing you need to get mm -hmm. the job done i'll take the heat that's what the mayor does so mm -hmm. you, you 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 take those forces who are just sort of against change mm -hmm. to be against change or who are against sloppy mishandled change which was the case here which is fine but who if who can you can then protect the superintendent when they need protecting do the sort of things you need to do to get in good people recruit good people because you can say look ultimately this is about the people who are running the city doing what's best for the city right. not about eight different personalities backgrounds and interests on the board that you have to please in varying manners throughout the week and there and people are going to say oh well that takes power away from the community but in fact Th those board members are elected by two and three percent right. of, of communities. Tiny, tiny yeah. votes, and and they're very tied to to the, uh, patronage machinery and job machinery, and 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 as you say, I think it's a good point that if if it's uh, if you've got the mayor, you can pin it all on. You can get rid of him, right? Uh, and you could say, you know you got rid of because you put your cronies on the board and they ran things in this way and they steered contracts to friends of yours or whatever kind of thing comes out of that. Right. Um, and then the next person comes in and understand. You know, you can you see that with the city council, right? You get a mayor who does these, who, you had a mayor uh, who... who who punished people who didn't get yeah. on board with him and wouldn't put them on committees right. where they could do the things they cared about. Right. Um, and now, you know, for as far as I've seen, Rawlings doesn't do that. He's no. much fairer, and he puts people in places where he puts a mix of different interests onto right. these committees so that they can, um, so that, they, they, that you can have different voices weighing in on these issues, but that things get done. I think that what but, worries me is that there are people who think that the school district gets to just muddle along uh, forever. I know a guy who's uh, an activist on stuff, and uh, I talk to him a lot. I consider him a friend, even though, oh my word, or, uh, we, we, we just cannot mention the word Obama in a conversation. <laughs> this guy is so right-wing that uh, I, 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 I just sort of say, okay, you said Obama, I'm hanging up now. Right, done. Uh, but this guy is very smart, and he is absolutely committed to the annihilation of public education he says i will not rest until the public education system is dead because he thinks it's that bad i, I i'm i'm not saying this guy is going to rule the world but there's but let's say we don't fix any of this we don't resolve it and the school district just drifts along in this very expensive and destructive way that ain't going to go on forever because the other alternative if you can't fix it is to kill it a and you the way it would be killed you know i mean there's and sometimes is that good is that bad i don't know you mm -hmm. look at new orleans right right they 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 have shut now you're going from a very low starting point but out of the top 20 or so districts in the country they're showing the most improvement and, right they, and what do they got like 75 percent of their kids in charter schools or something? Uh, yeah it's all it, it was come in and and i don't act you know i don't want to pretend like i know yeah. a lot about it but right. i know a little about it and they have you know it's privatized and they've they've um you know they're giving contracts to people to go right. and run different areas of the of the district and they're showing tremendous improvement because there's vehicles by which people can get things done and protect themselves from um, small but vocal minorities who try to throw a wrench in those. But let's, let's say they fire Miles. Then is there not, uh, are, are there not going to be some people out there who are going to take a decision which is, okay, this thing can't be fixed from within. 
it's huge and it's like this this gigantic aircraft carrier that's that's floating into our dock <laughs> you know it's right. very dangerous and it cannot be fixed and it cannot be turned therefore we know if we kill it there's going to be chaos and we're not sure what else to do and we're going to be like new orleans experimenting with other stuff but the experiment seems to be going okay there the chaos is better than the status quo are there not people who will feel that way that we just need to kill this thing because it can't be worse than this yeah i think so well and like i said two weeks ago i also think there is such a there is such a feeling that the current the center cannot hold regardless right that if if this is the straw here if they get rid of miles that that there's a there's a there's a business community and there's a political community right. that has really invested itself in the last couple of years and really invested itself in Mike Miles to be the person to the to to take the heat right we're going to give you the capital and the political cover to take the heat to do make changes to get rid of the patronage system and to begin the process of turning that aircraft carrier mm -hmm. around it's slow it's going to take a long time there's a lot of things that there are a lot of fires we're going to have to put out during that mm -hmm. if they feel like all their best efforts have been undone in this way over something like you you theoretically got somebody theoretically to speak bad about crazy board members who <laughs> need to be saying, spoken about saying they were crazy saying they're crazy yeah. and they're running people off because they were running people off because <laughs> they were crazy because they were crazy <laughs> yeah. if that's the reason they get rid of this person i'm done i'm out yeah pull them yeah. out yeah we're doubling down on charters we're doubling down on private schools we'll figure this out once it's burned then we'll come in and we'll look through the ashes. And I, and the other point is, those same folks are going to back away, and maybe the community backs off a distance and looks at this with some, some perspective and some distance and says, wait a minute, all these people standing up here telling us that we got to fire this guy because of his the letter that he wrote, we got to fire him because he was mean to this lady who was his head of communications. Is this like the gold medal Olympic team of education telling us this right <laughs> what is the standing here right what from what <laughs> right you know it's it's like when when i was doing you know the the group that came in 10 years ago that um uh lisa blue helped pay for her husband at her uh, 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 deceased husband helped pay for to come in and change texas democratic politics yeah. right yeah they came in and they said we're going to put structure and we're going to come into these these other cities and we're going to tell them how to run these races okay and everybody locally got really ticked off like what do you think we don't know what we're doing we've yeah. been here. Right. and they looked at them and said look at what your well, look at what your record yeah okay lose lose I, lose 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 lose, lose, lose. <laughs> republicans yeah. as far as the eye can see yeah now you could say they rode the Obama wave, but the fact is that they, you know, I would sit there and hear this griping about about them, the Texas Trust, and I would hear this griping about them and go, uh, they they can kind of say what they want because your scoreboard. Because all you do is lose. Because all you do is lose. They we don't have that. Yeah. We don't have that group who can say, look, we've been running things so well. Yeah. Or we know we have expertise in this and we know it and we by the way not just have expertise in it but have shown that we can run things in a in a reasonable smart strategic right. manner um, and not be swayed by the media not be swayed right. by community voices that are that are loud but maybe minority and I mean minority yeah. in terms of small obviously yeah. um, they haven't shown that and, and we get this how dare you attitude from them from the from the people who want miles out how dare you and i'm thinking what do you mean how dare how dare easy <laughs> right. uh, based on what the thing i feel badly about in my heart is that i know and you know that there are a lot of great teachers out there when this kind of change comes through the big and principles yeah treaded vehicles start mashing through the village and a lot of innocent people are hurt and and they shouldn't be, and it's terrible. And again, we're in this weird position. That is absolutely true. And if you talk to people in headquarters, they will tell you off the record, good teachers have left. Yeah. Good principals got absolutely. caught up in this. 
and part of that was Miles' refusal to listen to us. That said, he believed, I think he was wrong, but you can understand where he came from. I've got to keep the focus. I've got to bring yeah. those vehicles in. I've got to crush people. And right now, I can't tell enemy from not. Right. I, and maybe there is uh, there is absolutely the instance where there's a great teacher and all of a sudden here shows up some 25 year old totally understand yeah y y you know uh, uh, full, full of what we can't say on the radio right. person uh, telling him what to do and that uh, you I, would I, would hate that. I would hate that I would hate I have left for things <laughs> like that <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I get it it's not right and 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 you worry that you're in this sort of Stalinist position of saying, "Well, the revolution must go on, even if uh, you got screwed." <laughs> right, and, and and it's 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 nothing but unfortunate, sad, and perhaps better. Perhaps it could have been avoided. I don't know. Perhaps with a better a better more strategic plan. Perhaps with 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 doing this sort. Of, by the way, that's what a board could have done. A board could have said, "Mike." We hired you to do this. Your two top points here about teacher performance. Right. Yeah. You know, they. That's. You're on. Yeah. You're, 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 that's good. Yeah. We are losing too many good people because yeah. of maybe we're doing. Let, let's give you the ability to draw back. Let's give you the ability, and we'll take the heat for this. Right. Let's give you the ability to. Let's do this over two years or three, so that we don't lose some of. The, let's find a way to move those people around. Um, we don't want to just let a community dictate because uh, when they've got a school that's turning out 1% of college-ready sure. kids. But we also don't want to lose good people because in the process, they didn't do that. Just to do that, they have to have a deal where they say, we're going to back you on the big stuff. You got, We got your back. But you're going to listen to us about the exceptions to the rules. Right. And, and it's going to be a two-way street. The board members can't start out. There was an exception to the rule. We want you fired. <laughs> um, you know, you can't. Well, they can because they're doing it. Yeah, they're right. leading the day. So th there needed to be a deal, and and under the current structure, uh, there just wasn't going to be one. And if you can't change the fact that these are elected officials, there's got to be some public pressure and media pressure to define their roles more exactly, to call them out when they overstep them. Yeah. And, um, and and change the their function um, and if they won't get coaching on how to how to do be a good right. effective board then right. then the community and the media and the forces that be need to put whatever effort they can into coaching them what we think is will help a superintendent be effective I'm afraid to meet face to face with Mike Miles. I'm afraid he'll show me the, the ace of spades, and I'll have to go kill somebody. <laughs> like he hasn't already, Jim. <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> it's a suppressed memory of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, Pamela, Pamela Landy is involved in this somehow. Jason Bourne is out there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, it's very exciting for. So, what's going to happen today? We uh, think we think four four. I think four four. I, th I think you got the, f the four board members who were counted on not to vote to fire him. Right. And if one of them votes to fire him, wow, that person's life has <laughs> changed from <laughs> here on out because it's a lot of pressure on them not to. Th th there's, well, I, I guess you can call it both ways. There's pressure on them to stick the knife in them there's pressure on them not to so I, I think they'll you know and that's the other thing is they can just say we did what we had to do yeah. and there's there's no accountability there Jim shoots Eric Celeste get off our lawn see you next week KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth the voice of the people Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.